Good evening. This is Ravenico Live. I must also acknowledge the fact that Zimbo Live is also airing this exact same program on their platform. And a special mention to our sponsors that have made today's episode happen. We'd like to thank Rooney's for the amazing setup. We'd also like to thank Mel's Touch for dressing me. Pro Air for the fact that we can all still breathe in this room. We've got aircon blowing, um, as well as Tal One for giving us their fiber. And of course, Swiss Global across the borders. So thank you again to all of you. And if you don't know already, tonight's episode, our host, our guest, sorry, is the Minister Xavier Kasukwere. He's a Minister of Local Government, Public Works and National Housing. He's also the ZANU-PF National Commissar, Political Commissar. Thank you for joining us, thank sir. And thank you for your patience. Expect the <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's what this is about. You know, we, no, we're itching we, toward 2018, we you know? Patient. Yeah. Uh, we're very patient. <laughs> you know, if we go for another hour, we'll still be here. You're here. <laughs> because we must communicate. Right. That's, yes. I'm glad you understand the importance of that. And that's what we're all here for. The audience wants to clap. <laughs> <laughs> all right. No, um, Honorable Minister, you know, your role, um, as I told you before we started, when I was investigating what it is that your role encompasses, both as a party role and a government role. And what I established was that your role as the minister of uh, local government is basically a role that depicts the perception of the country, the standards of living, because of the areas that you address, right? People's day-to-day -day life, right? The infrastructure, the housing, the land. And that same role also is mimicked in your role with the party, where you are the one who's responsible for people's perception of government and the party. You're the one in charge of, you know, like you said, rightfully so, electoral campaigns, all of that. So tell me how big this responsibility is on you and how you're coping. <laughs> I, can't, I, I can't measure it. Yeah. All I know is a lot of hard work. Yeah, it's it a is. a lot of hard work. You have to, you won't believe this. Hmm. This morning I set off in Mashingo. I was in Gweru, and I'm here now. Wow. Just one Are you day. here for us, or you well, just happen to be coming again, home? again, the crowd. <laughs> We needed the crowd, yes. same way to communicate. Right. So, but I'm just showing you that um, with political work to do in Masungo province, mm -hmm. uh, I had to deal with the councils in uh, Gweru mm -hmm. City Council, which is about the people right. uh, trying to ensure that they service delivery. Right. And now we are communicating. Right. It shows you that um, for a normal day, I think I'll give it maybe over 15 hours. That you dedicate to national service. National service. Yeah. Yeah, national service, my right. political work, right. my ministerial work. Right. Yeah. You started your political life in 1988, actively, in the yes. Prime Minister's office. And you've covered a number of ministries over the years. And toward the end of the program, we're going to get into this. But what I want to delve into immediately is where you said you were today. You talked about being in Mashingo, you talked about being in Gweru. My assumption is that you were dealing with the, the state of national disaster that the country is in. I believe you explained. Mm. Today, mm. in Mashingo, yeah. the party has been going through an electoral process, right. choosing a chairperson of the province. Right. And that process is still underway. Mm -hmm. It has been affected there and there by the rains. We've had some quite a bit of rains in um, Mashingo, Chiret's area, um, uh, the Mwenez area. But generally, I think I would say 60% of that about mm -hmm. the work has been done. And we'll be looking forward to seeing what comes out of it. Right. And then Gweru, we set up a tribunal to look at the mayor of Gweru, by in this team. They were suspended uh, by the ministry because my, uh, I as minister early last 2015. Mm -hmm. And today the findings were brought to us by the tribunal. They went through a trial mm -hmm. within a trial. Mm -hmm. And uh, the decision of the tribunal was that we must relieve the mayor of his duty. Right. So he's gone and another councillor who was found kind of like uh, guilty right. for corruption, negligence, and right. so forth. So we've reinstated mm -hmm. other councillors back at work right. who were cleared by the process. So this is the normal work one has to do. Of course, tomorrow morning. The normal we'll work being fixing the structures within the party as yes. well as uh, sorting out where local government is exactly. concerned, those that are in power yeah. and taking care of our provinces. Exactly. And then right. tomorrow we'll go to Cholocho. Mm -hmm. We now have about 855 citizens who have lost their homes, their dwellings, right. and uh, we're taking to them tents, right. medicines, uh, materials for day-to-day -day use, mm -hmm. uh, food and so forth, and just making sure also that the kids 
have education, right. schools, right. but to integrate them in the next school, right. because the school that they're going to do is are finished. Right. It's all underwater. Right. So we've got to push them to the next school. So this is, you know, kind of responsibility that one has to shoulder. Right. But once you have accepted an assignment, you must do the job. So what are the plans for relief efforts in these areas? I mean, this is not the first time Zimbabwe has experienced this, um, and you haven't yet declared this a national disaster. When will it be? Well, we already have been going through processes. Um, one, we had the drought situation, which was the state of national disaster again. Mm -hmm. Now, a drought is to, you look at it from two angles, more water or less, mm -hmm. no rains or excess of it. So in this case, we are continuing on that basis, but we also have to declare a state of disaster in Harare, owing to the amount of roads that were destroyed yes. by the incessant rains. Right. And because Harare is our economic hub, it's very important that we Safe raise as much resources as possible mm -hmm. and restore the functionality of our so Harare would be a priority? It, 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 of course, everything is a priority. But I'm just saying to you, we already have an ongoing program, which is a state of national disaster, owing to the drought situation. And our view right now is that we must cover that and also ensure that Cholocho, we give people food, we ensure that they are well settled, we give them shelter, clothing, and so forth. Where are these resources coming from? Well, we have been, um, and I'm happy to say, we have received quite a lot of support from the Red Cross, we have received from UN agencies, we have received from the International Committee of the Red Cross. Mm -hmm. We've also got private companies, individuals. Mm -hmm. The Honorable Member of the area, Professor Moy, also donated something towards um, his people. The government has chipped in a big way. Right. And uh, particularly the Defense Forces through the Air Force, they have been very key in uplifting. I understand, yeah. People, so yeah. which is something that we must salute. Sure. And, um, but the community is also assisting. Uh, you have your community leaders, they're chipping in. Mm -hmm. And we're still looking out. But is it more. enough? Well, not enough, of course. There's nothing that one yeah. can say, I have enough of it. Right. But so far, things are good. We are trying to ensure that we move these people from the low-lying areas mm -hmm. where they build their homes to some places that will not be prone to this kind of floods again in the mm -hmm. future, mm -hmm. which means they'll still require much more. Right. There's an African leader who lately has been quite a, a, a highlight looking at servant leadership, right? President Paul Kagame. And uh, we have the celebrations of our president, his 93rd birthday coming up on the 25th at the weekend. And over the years, there's been almost, probably even over, $1 million spent over his birthday celebrations in the past five years, right? My question to you, um, Honorable Minister, is in light of what the country is going through, these floods, the disaster situation, would it not be prudent for a government or a party to reallocate resources where we know there was fundraising done, right? We know that there are funds available. Would it not be prudent to reallocate these resources at this time towards something more dire as opposed to a celebration? Let me put it to you this way. The resources that are raised to celebrate the life of our icon right. will never be enough anyway to deal with the set of disasters that I'm talking about. But they would help. I agree. But we are already doing what we have to do. In other words, the process that we're embarking on is to ensure that we shelter, we give people shelter, we give them food and everything, including education. So the two must be looked at differently. You must separate the issues? Exactly. I think it's Do you feel the people look at it that well, way? Well, the Youth League have gone out on their own to raise resources. Sure. They were not aware mm -hmm. that there will be this kind of disaster. The disaster has happened at a time where they have almost called it the 12th hour, mm. where they have already finished all the preparation, mm -hmm. you can't then say, stop this, because we have to go and attend to this situation. We read this government, and as chairperson of the disaster relief agents in this country, I must move and ensure that we do everything. We've had interministerial committee meetings where all the ministers, Minister of Health, Minister of Agriculture, mm. have all come, and they are playing their part to alleviate the suffering in our people. I do understand that you know, the perception will be, well, why are you continuing? But look, yeah, because it's not like well, you can't the world, pull the plug the or over, redirect will, resources. <laughs> people go for Christmas, yeah. the world over, yeah. but there will be challenges in some parts of the world. You do not stop. But sometimes parents will tell their children, we can't travel this Christmas because yes. we have to pay fees next year. But I think the point I'm making to you, mm. the amount of support we have received it's and we're really pouring to the communities is actually very commendable. For instance, 
The Air Force of Zimbabwe mm -hmm. has actually been best in this area mm -hmm. for the past two weeks. Mm -hmm. So which means that government's commitment mm -hmm. to the welfare of our people is not mm -hmm. compromised. Mm -hmm. The youth league effort mm -hmm. to honor the president. Mm -hmm. This is an individual who has done quite a lot for this nation and the young people of this country have raised their own resources to try and honor the icon, the founding father of our nation. Right. And I think he deserves it. I, I, no one's taking I, that I, away. I, I mean, at 93, it. anybody deserves a massive exactly. celebration. We'll never take that away. Um, but looking at uh, the Cyclone uh, Eileen disaster of 2000, there are reports that some of those victims have not yet been fully reallocated, uh, you know, housing have not been fully assisted. So if we're looking and dating back 16 years ago, and you sit there confidently and say the disaster of 2017 is under control, surely there's still a backlog of other disasters that have happened where some families are not okay. There are growing slums in our country, which we can't deny. Mount Hampton, Hopely Farm, it, we can't just talk about the floods today, but there are many instances in which there needs resources. And I'm taking away from the 21st uh, February movement celebrations. Let's look in general at the reallocation of budget resources. You have, you are spot on. We have challenges across the country. Hmm. In one of my tweets, when I was in Cholocho, I said, we have a problem. It's an acknowledgement that we have challenges. Right. Let's put Cholocho aside. Right. Let's talk general about the country. Right. We have a lot of things that we must attend to. Mm -hmm. Do we have sufficient water in Harare? No. Do we have sufficient schools in our country? No. Medicines in our hospitals? No. These are challenges mm -hmm. that we are all seized as right. Zimbabwe. Right. And we must, on a daily basis, realize we have a responsibility. Right. Talk about housing. We have a lot of plans and programs underway now, how we can get our people shelter and accommodation. Right. It is a basic right. right. People must have shelter. They right. must look after their children in a decent way. Right. We are doing that, allocation of land, making sure that people have an opportunity to build their homes, but don't also underestimate the resolve by government to try and do our way with poverty. Mm -hmm. What are we talking about? A number of the initiatives that this government has come up with are aimed at hitting at the core of poverty in our society. You land reform program. In a way, if you look at it. When did that land reform program well, I'm start? I'm just trying to <laughs> show you, Ruben yeah. Eko, how far we have gone and what we have to attend to. There will certainly be a lot of milestones right. to be achieved. Right. You've talked about the Hopley, mm -hmm. but there have been massive housing schemes that have been given birth to by people who came from Hopley. Not to, not to satisfaction, I hope you've Honorable been to Minister. Hopley. I have. Been I have been there. Where remember when I was a part of the, the Zimbabwe Youth Council. We no, spent no, a lot I, of time. I'm sure we didn't go out there. But I've yeah. been there as Minister of... Um, yes. So I'm, I'm sure you picked this when you were investigating mm -hmm. uh, Hopley and other places. Yeah. Agreed. Let's not forget mm -hmm. our people who are in those areas which require water which requires sewage and power. Right. That is a basic thing that we must attend It's a basic human to. right. Exactly. Right. And we are doing that. Right. But of course, you know what? Each time you remove a family, you settle them nicely, chances are another family also comes in. Of course. And it's the exactly role of government that. to make sure yes, that that's taken care of. But we, we have not said we are going to stop empowering, we are going to stop housing our people. We must continue. Okay, my question was pretty much based on the fact that you said that at this juncture with the current floods that are happening in the country, in terms of uh, donors and s support and resources, you were fine. But I'm just saying there's a lot that we have about well, data and many issues. Well, I didn't say we were fine. I said we are on top of the situation. Right. To say fine would mean, look, we don't need any help. Right. I wouldn't want to say that. Right. I think we require a lot of help. Minister, how does it look then, you know, when we say, you know, in Zimbabwe, we know that we are a developing country. We never take that away. There are many countries around us that are also developing, that are genuinely developing, but we are continuing to develop slums and continuing to develop situations where people are not living comfortably. And I, I don't know what the plan is. Is there a, a plan for especially infrastructure? Slums? Because... Where have we been developing well, I mean, we, we don't talk of slums like perhaps those in South America. We talk of situations where people are not living comfortably. People are living on top of each other, right? And it's not, it's not safe. It's a health hazard. You look at the roads, you look at garbage, you look at sewage. You know, we have gone around um, in this week knowing that you were coming. And we looked at footage. <laughs> we sure asked people can, to send us footage. You can ambush me opened nicely. it up. Not even ambush you, sir, but to be able to understand what your plan is. Because you have had a legacy over time, you know. 
you have you have done certain things in certain ministries, but in this ministry you want to see. There's exactly. a specific question here that came on Facebook. Hi, Ravenico. But this one takes us away from, from, from pollution and what we're talking about now. That one talks about stands, so we'll come to that later. But um, what I want to look at is specifically the plan Ravino, for can orderly, I to you orderly development in orderly Zimbabwe. De look, we had mm. this problem of land barons. Right, yes. People were grabbing land, mm -hmm. selling to desperate house seekers. Mm -hmm. People were looking for stands to mm -hmm. build their homes. Mm -hmm. We have stop that madness with the cooperatives which went beyond being cooperatives they became businesses right today have this you can't blame them that's no, based no, but, on but economy okay people Let's, can adjust. i explain please do a cooperative is perhaps 10 of us yeah. coming together mm -hmm. when do they sit and say look we require land to build our homes you are given the land you build the homes and we move again <laughs> Those of us who have been looked after, mm -hmm. we go and build a new property, start a new development. Mm -hmm. The cooperative started mutating. I'll give you an example of um, Caledonia. Yes. We've got about 60,000 households mm -hmm. that just moved into that area. But look at what we've done. We've worked on the road, 4.5 Let's kilometers. Let's look at why they moved into that area. Well, exactly. <laughs> this is what we are dealing with. Yes. Land barons. Yes. We're Chikangas. Yes. There's a man called Chikanga mm -hmm. who was selling land. Mm -hmm. This is what I've talked about land barons. He's been arrested. Mm -hmm. He's now standing before the courts. Right. He's got to be dealt with. Right. And others who basically took advantage of a genuine desire by our citizens to have a piece of land to develop and became themselves an authority. Were you we're not implicated as a land baron yourself, Minister? regarding the Magaya issue. I mean, if we use that term <laughs> loosely, you pointed out a gentleman who's currently got a court case, but something like that, if we're here... But at least we I don't have a Caledonia. Here. No, but it, we, oh, we, you have a 50-bedroom well. house. Well, let's not start on that one. <laughs> you have a 50-bedroom house. 50-bedroom, you believe Tamba? Apparently. You believe Tamba? I've I mean, never I, been I, there. No, I've never been there, but I've seen it from the distance. I mean, the lighting is pretty... Invited. Pretty astute. Surely you know my you know? house. You can walk in any time. <laughs> right. Come and do the counting. Right. And you come here and tell the people how many bedrooms you find. Okay, let's assume there's 48 as opposed to 50. Right? <laughs> Minister, we are talking about the situation. You know, if you want me to change into a hotel, <laughs> say so. I yeah. think that would be very good. You might good. as well. You know, it might, actually, it might actually foster employment. You know, because we have your colleagues that are offering uh, 4 million jobs. Was it uh, Minister Mushoe, I believe, talked about that? But anyway, we digress. <laughs> we digress. Okay. No, Rui is very provocative. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we want to deal with the issues. I last interviewed Let's you in 2013, Minister. Yeah. So this is an opportunity, and I am grateful that you decided to Thank come. Thank you very much. Um, but let's go back to this issue that you're explaining. Land barons, corruption, those are areas we can't run away from. But in, and, your, and in your sphere of control. Rui, yeah. Let me say, to the, say this to you. We are very determined as mm -hmm. a state mm -hmm. to ensure that the housing delivery mm -hmm. is done right. in a manner that also looks after the poor right in a manner that is corrupt free mm. in a manner that ensures that going forward all the city planning requirements are attended to you tell you what you go to some of these suburbs 200 square meters the guy has dug a well and there's a toilet mm -hmm. and the next property similar toilet and well mm -hmm. what does this mean it's a serious health Hazard. Right, right. Look at what Emma was talking about just a few months ago, mm -hmm. that our water, our underground water, has been polluted. Mm -hmm. There are some suburbs in Arari where the pollution leaves a lot to be desired. In our quest to bring about order and decency, yeah. we are emphasizing that as we develop the city, let there be sewage, let there be water. Okay, we, we can say that, but you're not Jesus who can say, let there be light. So in a situation, but I think my minister, name is Savior. <laughs> oh, Savior, but you're also Tyson. So mm -hmm. as much as you might be my Savior, dad, you're also my dad considered called a me Savior. fighter. He didn't call me Jesus, but he called me Savior. <laughs> but you, using the term "let there be," you know, I, I, we have also footage of situations in our country, in our CBD, in our capital city, Honourable Minister. I don't know the route that you drive daily. Perhaps on a Monday to Friday, on your way to work and back home. But what I know for a fact is a lot of. Um, 
You know, there's a lot of high-profile gentlemen and uh, government ministers that live in a certain area of Zimbabwe, of Harare. You know, we've seen where they are, you know, talk about health hazards, you talk about a well and a toilet. But there is day-to-day -day where you'll find on the streets of Harare, in the capital city, where they are, there's poor drainage, where there's somebody selling uh, fruits and vegetables on the side of the road. Those that are going to work will pick up a banana and an apple on their way. We talk about typhoid. I mean, when the typhoid outbreak happened, people said to me, Ruvenico, speak to your father, you know. But we need to, your ministry is combined in this area. It's about the Ministry of Local Government as well as the Ministry of Health. What are you doing about this? Well, thank you very much for raising that matter, Ruvenico. Your dad and I yeah. and the other ministers sit together right. to deal with this problem. As you often do. Yeah, well, yes. to deal with specifically <laughs> with the issue of typhoid. Right. We had a few cases. We lost about two or three people, mm -hmm. one in Bari. Which is one too many. Exactly. We lost people. Mm -hmm. And we immediately moved in. Right. We had to uh, look at the situation, mm -hmm. the water in Bari. Mm -hmm. And now we isolated some of those boreholes where we had a uh, sewer problem, mm -hmm. which ended up leaking into some of the right. nearby wells and so forth. Right. And uh, we then immediately put ourselves on this huge mission. This is just after Christmas. Mm -hmm. We attended to Mbare. We cleaned up the city. We cleaned up Mbare. We have now you done... You cleaned up Mbare? Oh, yes. When last did you go to Mbare? Well... Honorable Minister. Ru, I, this is my work. Maka pedstra kuendarini kumbari. Pa matapi pa et. No, I went to matapi uh -huh. with your dad. Right. And what we saw that day... I had not been to Matapi in a number of years. Right. But when I went there, it's just unacceptable. Do you take pictures and show this perhaps even to the president? Well, we because did. we know that his cars don't go that route. So do you ever, does he know, you know, besides sort of seeing, because you know, we the, know he's not on Twitter. actually mm. was very concerned about the situation. Right. And that's why we had to run. Right. And because he was always saying to us, guys, what are you doing about the situation? There is a deterioration right. of the situation in Harare. Right. The cleaning up of Harare mm -hmm. is a cabinet issue. We discuss about it now and again. Sakachi Not just Harare, Harare. Right. but okay. right now, you explain look at what yes. we've done. We mobilized from the Defense Forces, city of Harare, uh, Emma, my ministry. We moved in people, and we have removed quite a lot of the debt which was in uh, Mbare. We moved into the central Harare. A lot of the work is happening. But it's a lot more than garbage. We also yeah. have to balance mm -hmm. this with some of the women, mothers who are selling the streets. Yes. Okay? Yes. We can't be a brutal government. We can't become careless mm -hmm. and just you know, use this kind of hard hand. Sure, because you tried Muramba Trina. No, no, you no, tried Muramba removing. Trina, um, but we are trying know. to ensure that we locate those people on places designated by the city. We are giving support to the local authority, which is a responsibility in terms of our law, right. of looking after the urban centers. Right. But we realize that they also have challenges, financial challenges and so forth. Mm -hmm. So all of us together, we can't apportion blame mm -hmm. to one department mm -hmm. or one person and say, mm -hmm. the mayor is a problem alone. No, we all have to come in. Mm -hmm. And we have, I think, done a very good job. But that job has not stopped. We continue you to You think you've done a very good job? Well, Honestly. Rubenico, there will still be some people who drop you know they, along the way. Yes. But what can I do? You're supposed to fix it. You are How the do Minister I fix of you Local when Government. You are moving around and you, you take talk about the city of Harare, which we know is in shambles at the Rubenico, moment. There's a mayor in court, there's a mayor today, there's Will not a mayor tomorrow. There's no <laughs> governance at all. No, no, the mayor is in place. But, <laughs> but look at this. For now. You have people driving in the streets. Right. And they've just been eating. Uh -huh. They just pushed down their But window. if it looks like a garbage dump, no, they're but, going to just but, follow but, suit. But I hope and trust that mm -hmm. we can encourage fellow citizens to look after the environment. We have to. Because yes, the city council has to do its part, but as citizens, you can't just pick after, you know, a, a drink or something from uh, Nando's. You throw the K lights out. Do you know today I drove down College Road yeah. and there were two roadblocks on one road, right? And my question then, Honorable Minister, if we're talking about citizen participation, saying that we should also play our role, not litter, all of that, instead of them stopping people for auna reflector, auna fire extinguisher, and it, auna read your license, you're going to one corporation, us new broadcasters don't benefit from that. Um, why is it that then they don't police litter? Okay? 
They'll tell you, I'm not made up a stop sign, penny line, my food are lines, like a $20. If you want citizens no, to participate, it should do. be police. Let's ask and the then police. we can participate. No, no, let's ask the police huh. to put, and I'll talk to my Chinguri about yeah. it, to ensure that citizens carry some beans, small plastic beans, in their vehicles. Aiewa. Hapana uda bin mota. Muda bin mota. Okay, let's acknowledge, let's acknowledge our live audience. Thank you all for tuning in. We have our Zimbo live audience. We have so you think being a good and, candidate uh, fans? We'd, like you to, we'd like you to send your questions to us for our Honorable <laughs> Minister. Um, they will be acknowledged. We're going to try to get through as many of them as possible because we have him here. We don't know when we'll have him again. As I said, the last time I spoke with him was three years ago. Um, so we have him today. So let's make the most of this opportunity and also make sure that I am addressing the right points. As he said, we all live in different parts of this country that we all love so much. Whether you live in the diaspora, whether you live locally, and if you're watching this, it means you love Zimbabwe on some level. So let's make sure that while we discuss, we address all the things that are pressing for us. Whatever it is that you find to be troubling you on your daily routine, whether it's your children that you feel are exposed to harm and, and, and hazards and natural disasters, let us know what your thoughts are and ask your questions, okay? So let's get into that, okay? I keep getting this question about housing, but we're not at housing. Let's continue to talk about, you know, the garbage, the litter. Let's expose that area, and then we move on and let this program have a, a steady flow. Before we come to our live audience, um, and, uh, oof, this one is quite aggressive. All right. Um, this one's talking about your 50-bedroom house. I don't know if you want to address that, um, Minister. I wish I had a 50-bedroom house. <laughs> he continues to deny the allegations. I did read about his denial of these allegations. Um, but you do have a sizable home, Minister. I think it's an ordinary home. <laughs> ordinary for who? Well, it's you who, who has told me it's a very big house. but it's an ordinary You don't home. see the size of it. Okay, you are Minister of Local Government. Have you been to smaller cities like Lupane, or you concentrate in bigger towns only? You have to focus on We've rural and Lupane. urban development, oh, right? Yes. I've yeah. been to Lupane. Mm -hmm. I've been to most of our urban centers right. in the country, right. Banda. Mm -hmm. I've been to Gweru. Just I was saying I was in Gweru. I've been to Mashingo. Right. Okay, so you visit these areas. Visit being the key word. Well, I go there to <laughs> see also yeah. what is happening. Right, right. Okay, we, we want to continue with this. Um, uh, this is uh, Joy Mai Aisha. She says, you have been building houses for the last 37 years. How come progress only comes towards elections? My Aisha, she says, I've been building homes for the past 37 years mm. when I'm 47 years old. <laughs> well, let's remove the years. Let's just talk about... No, but I'm just saying, you know, I don't know what she's talking about. Maybe she means you being the government, sir. Exactly. It probably means the government. I'm just, I'm just being funny. <laughs> yeah, but, but government yeah. is, has done quite a lot right. in terms of building homes over the years. Right. But the break came around 2000 mm -hmm. when we could not access a lot of our financial mm -hmm. lines of credit that supported right. our housing, I've been two, I've been one, and so forth. Mm -hmm. This was about uh, World Bank supported programs mm -hmm. that government was relying on. However, government has also encouraged the private sector to do their part. Mm -hmm. Apart from the efforts that were also undertaken, you recall the Lech Core with the housing schemes that were undertaken. And there is still quite a lot of building going on. Mm -hmm. And I must, at this particular moment, actually salute Zimbabweans. Look at the house that they're building. It doesn't matter whether it's in Seke, whether it's in the rural areas and so forth. They are building good homes, mm -hmm. ordinary homes, I must say. Ordinary in your eyes. Your house is ordinary, so we're not sure what that term means anymore. That's why I say it's an ordinary <laughs> home. We're all building homes in this Speaking country. Speaking of building homes, right, uh, there's some uh, you know, statistics here. So basically, um, in the 2000, prior to, so the, the, there were civil servants housing that you promised. Yes, it's not promising. Uh -huh. We're actually going to commission that program. We're going to start in March. But as long as it's not done, it's a promise, correct? No, no, but, but Drew, oh. when, when we announce a scheme, right. this was the conception stage, All right. where the civil servants, the Apex, mm -hmm. sat down with the ministry mm -hmm. and agreed. This mm -hmm. was a request that came mm -hmm. from the PTUZ. Mm -hmm. Uh, teachers, Progressive Teachers uh, Union yes, of Zimbabwe. Yes, and also uh, the Apex Council, led mm -hmm. by uh, Cecilia Alexander. Right. Cecilia Alexander. And we agreed. Right. Uh, look, this is the way to go. Mm -hmm. We have actually realized we can mobilize savings from our civil servants and direct them to housing. But Micro they must financing, but uh, So they must... Uh, so is this is, so from March, this is probably going to be yeah, taking March place. March, we will kick start. All right. And then um, the Denoda farms outside Chitungwiza for the youth. How far are we on that? It's, the planning has been done by yeah. HITCOP, uh -huh. that, that is done. Right. Um, our only slight challenge is to ensure we have sufficient water. Mm -hmm. Arare, we need to add more water, even to Stungweza. Mm -hmm. We're giving some water to Stungweza, maybe right. 24 megawatts, mm -hmm. megaliters of water mm -hmm. daily. Mm -hmm. But Stungweza wants to consume 
over 30 to 40. Right. I mean that some homes that have been built in Tungis are actually not getting water. Mm -hmm. We have in, in our minds the need to bring about on board the Muda Dam. Mm -hmm. We should also add some additional water for Harare right. and including Dinota. But Dinota has been planned now by UTCOP and uh, there is uh, ongoing discussion with young people right. so that they can you know, make sure that sure. Uh, they are ready themselves. Sure. We know, of course, they don't have enough money. Mm -hmm. Hence, we've made it a lot easier for them to acquire the land. But we hope and trust that as they work hard, mm -hmm. they can also be able to put up their homes as, as well. All right. We can't dispute much more because, as you said, these are plans and commitments that have been made by our government to all of us. So we can only see, perhaps post-2017, uh, whether these plans are going to take place. Um, the other question we have, Honorable Minister, you know, regarding um, you know, evacuation and responses around uh, the disaster and the floods going on. Do you think there's enough effort to call for citizens to evacuate certain areas? Or is that a challenge that government is facing where citizens don't listen? Because I know this came up in a debate. Yeah. Because this is twofold, this problem. You see, normally some of the areas are very fertile. Right. I'll give you an example of the Mzarabani, mm -hmm. which is um, not in Zimbabwe. The people have built homes along or close to the uh, Zambezi River. Mm -hmm. Each time there are floods, huge and rich deposits are left on this piece of land. Mm -hmm. It's hot. When you plant trees, I mean, when you plant your maize and so forth, you immediately get some good results. You don't even need to apply fertilizers. Now, our people, now and again, prefer to cultivate those pieces of land which are close to the Zambezi River. But now and again, especially when we have this flooding, they are affected. We move them to some places which are towards Centenary. They will settle there until the rain season comes. And well, they move back. No, no, just after the rain season, they will troop back. Right. Well, you know, I can't well, stay here. You can't fault them. I can't you know stay how here. Are. I've got yeah. to go back there. We've got our. It's home. We've got our resources out there. Yeah. Graveyards and okay. so forth. Right. And you can't stop them. Really. Right. And so it becomes a personal. Even the issue that we're going to be attending to in Cholosha tomorrow, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. those same people were removed by Comrade Border Guest then. Wow. And this is about 2001. <laughs> they were yeah. moved, mm -hmm. but they went back. Right. It's, it's about individuals and citizens. Mm -hmm. they, to an extent, the government cannot physically stop people from going back and building in certain places. Sure, sure. But when we have a disaster, we still have a duty to come and rescue our people. Okay, which you're managing to do. The other question around land, Minister, before we open up now, is there's a lot of push, especially from you, to give land and to uh, support housing, especially for young people. What are you instilling as a culture in the youth of Zimbabwe where there's over 90% unemployment, where young people will now wait to say, I can't wait to receive land from government because land, land, So what then is the value of land? You know, let me say, Rumbi, for me, the philosophy, the underlying philosophy, mm. we've got to get the best out of our young people. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt that we have capacity in our young people. Mm -hmm. They have the resolve, but we have to place on the table various opportunities which they can take advantage of. Talk about building homes. Mm -hmm. For how long can we go and say we are developing without our young people going to the housing market, developing and building their own homes? Mm -hmm. Zimbabwe will be built by Zimbabweans. Mm -hmm. We're not going to expect other countries to come and do what we should do ourselves. Right. We say to you, here is your place, Ruveneko. Mm -hmm. Can you do something about it? Mm -hmm. We know you have been able to buy yourself a cell phone. Mm -hmm. You've been able to buy yourself expensive watches. Yeah. Three, four, five thousand US dollars can give a young person a decent place within which to stay. But Minister, that model of yours to say we'll give land, we'll support young people, it doesn't support every young person. The bigger problem is that young people should be able to apply for mortgages, to be able to build themselves when they graduate, if they graduate. Because your model is not to say favoring a few, but favoring a few. No. We've got to put in place policies, programs and plans that uplift our young people. But you already have those. This is part of what we're doing. You already have but those. But we, we should not stop. Yeah. Even if we you, have some. I, don't, I dare to go back to the last election. No, no, you no. know, the promises of two million jobs, the promises. You know, you always put policies, programs in place, but they do not always come to fruition. That's a Why don't you ask me this question directly? Uh -huh. Political commissar. Yes. Your party promised two million jobs. Yes. Where are the jobs? Yes. This is the question you're putting to me. Yes. I Look. see you've rehearsed your answer, so go ahead. <laughs> 
I want the answer. Go ahead. I want. Go ahead. Well, look, let's look at two things here. There's a formal employment. Right. And informal employment. Right. It is a fact that quite a number of our people have gone into their own small businesses. Mm -hmm. One of them is you. Mm -hmm. This is your own form of empowerment, your own form of employment, right. but nine out of ten, it is not captured in the statistics. Mm -hmm. When people talk about employment, it's how many white collar jobs have been set up in the mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. But we have to recognize the impact of our agriculture. How many young people have gone to tobacco? How many young people have gone into cotton? Mm -hmm. We've just now started sponsoring or supporting mm -hmm. the revival of cotton company of Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. 200,000 metric tons of uh, cotton mm -hmm. are going to be produced this year. Mm -hmm. And predominantly by who? Young people. Mm -hmm. These are the kind of jobs that to an extent are not looked at in As terms of formal employment. Right. They remain informal. Mm -hmm. I can still go on and point to a number of other initiatives that our young people in this country have been supported by the state opportunities have been created but what we need to do is to find a way of formalizing the informal sector and say how do you wow. account for what our young people are doing imagine you are working just now we've been hearing that year. one yes but today you have set up your own company mm -hmm. you have all these guys who are working with you mm -hmm. and they're going to start any and i think what we must do is to continue to encourage our people like what you're doing. How many young people can do what I've just done? Exactly. That's Why, the thing. How did you do it? Why can't you share with us? How have you done it? Well, that can be an interview for another day. But the but point I think, is, my I think point people is, like you have done so well my must is, actually share their experiences. 100%, with their colleagues. which I do. I have people that I speak to, I do share the experience because we the do share that. Said, yeah. The government said, Ruvenico. Government did use, not support this. You can use this property. No, they never said that. Which well, government? Well, the University of Zimbabwe opens this up to anybody who wants to use but it. This company after Zimbabwe. company comes and pays their rent Zimbabwe. like I do. Government and they share this. But As I said, today's interview is not about me. Let us not be confused or sidetracked about the fact that this is a rented facility. Our guests can testify to that. It is a studio that we all can use. I like but it. When it starts yeah. biting you, no, 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 no. it I'm becomes... I'm fine. I'm fine. The nice thing is it's Ruvenico live, not Tyson live. <laughs> so uh, we're going to come to our comments now. I believe there were some comments on the Zimbo live platform. As we said, they're also beaming this program for us. So we're going to come to some of those questions now and lots of yours. So this is Skoliwe Chara. She says, why do you destroy people's houses when you have given them land? Why do you destroy people's houses, houses when, when you have given them land? Well, you don't destroy homes which have been built on properly acquired land. Properly acquired? Yes. Well, you'd know about that. So when tell the state us. makes yes. land available to you, right? she's talking about self-help. Okay. Where people simply say, you know what? I want to build my house mm -hmm. along Samora, Michelle. Mm -hmm. Will we allow that to stay? Okay, so that well, when they've been, people, but when they've been given land, I think her, exactly. her, her underlying, her underlying point is given by, by government, authority, by government, yes. city authorities, yes. or a registered developer. Nobody must touch that. And but if it is touched, when what then have do you do? Land barons, right. criminals, mm -hmm. who come and take advantage of a very desperate situation right. and sell land on a wetland, right? On a wetland, hundred percent, or on a servitude, right? Do we leave it there? Or sell land that shouldn't be sold? No, but do we not think about somebody building their home on a certain 100%. Can we 100%. allow that to stand? So when somebody goes through that, like you said, if somebody has been given the wrong type of land. By a wrong By a land baron through, through corruption, yeah. you know, and uh, what do they do? Well, have the time. And I must then say you come this. and demolish or remove them. No, but happens? we have gone out of mm -hmm. our way mm -hmm. to regularize some of the areas which we think can be settled. We have to sit down with the local authority and say, what do we do in this situation? There comes a point when you have to do what you think is in the best interest of the majority. Right. You can't go and use a grade or a caterpillar and bring down 60, 70, 80 houses, mm -hmm. which are painstakingly, painstakingly put up by our citizens. We've been very careful about that. But we also do not want to encourage our people that they wake up tomorrow morning, they build a two or three story house mm -hmm. on a place mm -hmm. which they have not acquired legally mm -hmm. from the city authorities. Right. If it's an illegality, right. it remains an illegality. Right.
Okay, we want to um, probe these questions. I don't have to do it on my own. We have you as our live audience. Thank you for sending your questions. Let, th let them come through via Zimbo Live or via our platform right here. And we also have our audience that has been sitting and laughing and chanting and shaking heads and, you know, kissing their teeth at certain comments as we've been discussing. So I will not take much more of this audience. I will allow you to carry on. So Tinashe Giava says, Minister, you destroyed thousands of homes during Murambatrina. How many have you replaced? Most of the people who were affected by the Murambatrina were resettled. On their way to Bulawayo, to the right and the left, most of those people have been resettled and have now pieces of land. Do we have numbers? Because that always sounds nicer. Well, I think it's, Not most of the it's, people. Uh, well, I, I can't give you exact numbers. I think I'll be lying. Mm -hmm. But I can assure you that most of the people who were affected by Murambatrina were settled. In fact, the state took an initiative right. of building some of the houses. Right. It was a fast track program. That was attended, what that was started by government, right. and some of the cars that were built had the citizens have now taken them over and they're expanding them for themselves. Curious to know, with our audience, we know that we've got people in the diaspora, people locally. Um, if you can corroborate that, those that know that Murambatrina happened and they still have relatives or themselves that were relocated or still have not yet found the adequate place to live and are still victims of a Murambatrina that happened years ago, please let us know on our live platform. Well, let's discuss this, okay? So let's continue with that. We've got some more questions. There was one that kept um, being put on uh, regarding housing. So you can go back to that. I think it was one of the first questions that actually came in before we went live. So let's go to that question that was popping up on my monitor here. Um, this is, uh, I don't remember the name, I, I apologize, but I did acknowledge that I'll, uh, I'll read out your question. Hi Ruveneko, I bought a stand Kunyatsime in 2008 from Chitungwiza, but Mawove took over. How are we going to win this? Hey. Well, uh, all I can say is if uh, they have such a complaint, please they should come forward to the ministry. They've come forward. They? They've come forward to you. You're the ministry. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They must come to me, not here. But on a, off the top of your head, how I, does I'm, one I'm, deal with I, that? I'm one of the ministers who's very accessible. My cell phone number is known even by bus conductors. Honorable minister, I can make it available what does here. this young lady do? Well, I've said she must come forward. Uh -huh. And I can understand their story. Uh -huh. Talk to her. If we can find a solution, either with the Chungusa City Council, so that at least we put right, right. what she lost. Okay, well, I think that's hopeful enough for response. Um, a question here, how can Zimbabweans in the diaspora access land to buy in the urban areas? Quite a number of schemes. The Reserve Bank runs the Home Link mm -hmm. program. UTCOP is in the process now of setting up a similar structure. Mm -hmm. We should actually make it easy for people in the diaspora. Right. That is one way we think can actually contribute to our national economy. Okay. We have a lot of our people outside the country mm -hmm. who want to build their homes in the country, and we should actually mob that money. And Home Link is just one of those examples. Okay, let's come to our live audience now. I see hands are bobbing up and down. Let's start right here in the front. Please just, uh, introduce yourself, and then uh, we jump right into your question for the Honorable Minister. Thank you very much, Ruveneko. Honorable Minister, thank you for sparing some time to speak to us. Number one, you as a National Commissar representing ZANU-PF and wanting to show you gun of votes for the party, what is happening to the land barons that we keep hearing about? We've not had anything in the public where people have been taken to court and been held accountable, number one. Number two, how are you going to come back to the electorate with confidence when people have been uh, moved to other places and they have not, there's no regularization happening and we keep having a rural to urban migration, which in some cases shouldn't be happening because the tobacco farms you're talking about are supposed to be functioning. But we have those people coming here. So my question is, what example are you setting? You said some people will move them because we want to set an example so that we prohibit and limit the movement. So what is going to happen to the land barons? And also the dubious war vets that come and settle people, and yet they are not even war vets. People who are less than the age of the independence of the country are the people that are dishing out land in Yatsime, are the people that are dishing out land in Hopley, Mount Hapton. We have cases and even uh, recordings of things, these things happen. What is going to happen for those people? Because you need those votes in 2018, and we need to believe that you're doing something. I, I agree with you entirely, if I can answer. Sure, go because ahead. Because I think um, this is a sketch that we have to deal with. We have people who have abused their positions and acquired land sensibly calling themselves our veterans. And we've said no to that. Those, some of them have been arrested, some of them are sent in trial, and some have been jailed. Records are there to confirm that. We are not going to brook that madness anymore. We just wake up in the morning and you start selling land to citizens who are not even suspecting that you're actually a bogus person. 
But I've also said, if our people require some form of proof or way to ask this person, are you authorized? Or go to the next police station and say, look, I've been made to believe by this bogus person. They advertise in the newspapers. They will say, come to Daventry House or this other place. We are selling land. Make sure you go to the police. Check. Is it a correct place that I must go to? Are these people authorized? If not, our ministry is there. But we've gone further now as a ministry. We are now debating and we've put this up in cabinet, a land developers bill, so that we have bona fide people who are involved in land development. We just can't have any individuals who sell land who are not authorized. Secondly, our town councils, municipalities, can confirm whether it is actually Ruveneko who is the actual owner of this piece of land. Don't get duped. We want to call upon our citizens. Because you want land, don't allow yourselves to fall victim to criminals. We, as a government, like you're saying, we have worked around the clock to regularize some of these areas, which we thought have to be regularized, because we think this was okay, it was wrong, but it is going beyond the stage where you can destroy the livelihoods. Look at this picture, a child sitting on this pile of rubble, a house that has just been demolished, She's putting on a school uniform, and she's trying to eat something. The mother is desperate. I think there was this picture some two years ago. It was very powerful, but painful. And I continue to make an appeal to our citizens. Don't allow yourselves to be abused or to fall prey to some of these characters. Mm -hmm. Sure. The dubious characters, they must be arrested. If you know them, they're in Mount Hampton, please let us know. We will not hesitate to send the police and get them arrested. All right. Thank you very much. I hope that's been answered to satisfaction somewhat. Well, somewhat. But we're going to have to power you through because we don't, we don't have much time. So we'd like to at least give an opportunity to many others. But we'll come back if you really feel that he needs to um, go, go a bit deeper there. Let's come to another question. Please introduce yourself and ask your question. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Jackie Ngarande, and I'm part of the She Vote 2018, an initiative to encourage all the Zimbabwean women to vote and to stand in power. On, on, on the commencing election of uh, 2018. Honorable Minister, your, your ministry is responsible of allocating uh, the, the housing land. What do you have to say by the seemingly a land distribution only for the ZANU PF youths? I have never seen an opposition youth owning land. When, 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 when it comes to the stands and everything, it's only the ZANU PF youths that benefits. And it's just, what do you have to say? Thank you very much for a very good question. But it's a question based on perception, not reality. You see youths, and you think this youth is just an PF. We have actually assisted many youngsters across the political barrier, including members of parliament from the opposition. Land belongs to all of us as citizens. Homes must be built by all of us as Zimbabweans. You might say, where did I make a statement to, this, to that effect. Perhaps I was addressing as an NPF rally, but as a political leader, I must explain what we are doing, even to this crowd. If you guys want to participate in these schemes, so be it. Come and let's discuss. Otherwise, I will be limited. I'll mm -hmm. then say, I can't talk about housing, because it's a an NPF uh, If the MDC were to call me to have a to talk about this, I will also go. Would you? Would you step foot in Harvest House? Where, where is Harvest House? It's in Harare. <laughs> I will go there tomorrow. Mm. I think tell this question that, uh, has come up time and time again about how uh, a lot of young people who don't actively support ZANU PF or carry a party guard feel that the policies that you give out or that you support are not actually for all, 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 all young people in the country. And but, I but think we that's are not a very, talking about very elections. issue. Elections are next year. They're really Venerable. right here. I was talking yeah. about it last year. Yes. And there were no elections. Right. We are a party that always looks after the interests of our people. Right. But if it makes us win elections, and you want me to do something that makes us lose elections. <laughs> We'd never expect that. What we are saying is, you also need to win voters. That if there's people out there that feel that your policies do not apply to everyone who does not vote for you, then you are losing potential you know, voters fellow countrymen, for you. We have lost a lot of time. Mm hmm by putting ourselves in various brackets. Right. Some people didn't want to acquire land. He says, because I'm MDC, I can't be associated 
with the land acquisition. Right now, they're coming at us tonight in, during the minister. Can I just give a small piece of land? I want to feed my children. Yes. Because this policy was the basis upon which our people went to fight. Um, my name is Maita Pua, and the reason I allude to being Maita Pua is I would like a Zimbabwe that is comfortable for my daughter and my kids. However, Honorable Minister, this is just uh, to ask you. In the business world, we have KPIs where people are measured by what they do. We need our MPs to be measured. The city council, you've just alluded that the mayor was fired today mm. uh, because of non-performance. And you also, the city council who work there, they are always scared, whether it's the FD, that they'll lose their job. When are we going to get to a point where our MPs are also scared to lose their jobs if they don't perform? Some of these issues are, we go and we vote for them and put them in power, but we don't see them coming up for these cleaning projects that we're talking about. All this dirt, if it's my constituency, I should worry first about the dirt before the minister or the ministry or the city council worries. We need at least a barometer that measures how effective an MP is in their area. If they're driving by and there's a pothole and he cannot put a bike here and put just the rubble to service that and he still wants to come in close to next year to ask for my vote, I don't think it's fair. We need a barometer as Commissar as well, that people are measured on how they've performed. Sure. Even the first one and a half years they haven't performed. I will allude to the fact that Kereke had his case. We voted for somebody else. A big case is potholes. Let's vote for somebody else. Because it's simple, those things need to be closed down. That's all I have to say. But anyway, I love your effectiveness in what you're saying. Please, can we see it tomorrow and the day after? Because we would want our kids to love the Zimbabwe we love right now. Thank, Thank you. you for that. Very well spoken there. I think uh, to take from that is what is the barometer to measure the performance of not just uh, mayors, but also members of parliament in their constituencies? The beauty the councillor and the mayor, the elected, the KPI. Mm -hmm. But that's after a couple of years. Exactly. Before and that's the that, constitution. That's but what this the constitution is what we says. don't want to wait but for. But you, you can't. Mm -hmm. If we're going to do that, mm -hmm. then we'll have chaos. Every two days, you say, oh, I think he's not performing. But the barometer right. comes in. We'll have elections almost ev every other day. Much like in a company, right? Yeah, but, you but go you through that. Performance model, you know, what are you doing? Are you achieving your goals? Are you, you know, li living up to whatever it is that we hired you for? All of that should be something that is actually measurable on something that's a standard model across the country, surely. Well, I, I think it's about delivery. You sell a set of principles and mm -hmm. policies mm -hmm. to the nation. You must see through. 100%. And you must be able to explain convincingly why you've been, not been able to meet some of the targets you set for yourselves. Mm -hmm. That's very simple. Councillors must account. Why do we have photos in Harare? They were voted for by the people. Yes, we have had incessant rains, but they should be able to say, in terms of servicing, our road networks, what are they doing about it? Mm -hmm. People will say, Kasuga is always fighting with the councils. I have a duty to look after, at the end of the day, the public interest mm -hmm. as minister. Mm -hmm. I must push these guys mm -hmm. and ensure that they're working. One of the things that really actually make me very mad is that at each and every city, our councillors get their pay gems, they get their allowances up front before they even start the meeting. Yet workers are not paid their salaries. Mm -hmm. Yet roads are not looked after. Mm -hmm. You raise it with them, they say, well, the minister is very intrusive. I have to, if I have to do my job. Now, but you sit in one of the top echelons of government, right? And you have the capacity to speak with your colleagues around the issues you've talked about, about civil servant salaries, about everything that you've mentioned, about the allocation of money toward infrastructure. These are things you are supposed to lobby for as the local government minister. So yes, you can talk to the councillors. Yes, you can fire mayors. But ultimately, it comes to your desk. And coincidentally, some of the mayors that you fire, if not most or all, are MDC. Was they the, in the majority, see? Uh, they're in the majority, or they're the ones that happen to no. not be living up to well, your standards. They are of, the of, ones of, of who are very easy to tell that they're not working. Or easy to target. Well, not easy to target. But look at City of Harare. You're talking about City of Harare. They're potholes. Mm -hmm. Actually, keeping them in place so is because I don't want you to say he is always firing people. So in the rural areas. Just drive those... around Barre. Oh. She was asking me questions about Barre. Yes. I'm going to answer back. The responsibility of Mbari lies in the city of Harare. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. Not government. Yes. But we have had to step in 
If you are putting these questions to me, yes, I, I hope you can call my good brother Bernard Manyangen here. Mm. <laughs> Ask him and his counselors, what are they doing about the double allocation of land? What are they doing they about They come back the... to you. Well, they, they will always find... come back to you. All the time. Is there a higher office than you, sir? <laughs> In this particular instance, is there? Well, this is the point I'm trying to make. She raised a very important and pertinent question to say, how do we measure? Barometer. Exactly. Uh -huh. Maramba, Mati, there will be chaos. Let's look at it. No, but no, no. Your Ma Taka 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 Taka. every day. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So it's a chaos. Nobody said do that. But even those that know that there's a barometer that's going to measure me for my first 100 days, for my first nine months, they also then put pressure on themselves and there's accountability. Surely. Uh, well, I think if you fail to deliver, one of the things that you must do is step down. Ooh. Isn't that contentious? <laughs> All right. Let us come back to our audience. Uh, we've got a question right here. Please Thank introduce you. yourself. Thank you, Ruven. Yes. Uh, okay. They normally call me TAPS eh? right. <laughs> in the local government uh, realm. Minister, uh, thank you very much for according us um, time here. Honorable Minister. Uh, it, my question is that um, in 2013, we adopted a, a constitution that all of us, you know, committed and said uh, it was a watershed uh, constitution. And, uh, you know, one of the things that was enshrined in the constitution was the local, was the uh, constitutionalization of the local government uh, uh, sector. No, it was the constitutionalization of the local government sector. In particular, you know, recognizing local government as a tie of government. Maybe as Honorable Minister, you can, you know, you can tell the audience in ter about, um, you know, the extent of, of government in terms of aligning uh, the, the, the local government legislation, the Webbing Councils Act and the Rural District Councils Act to the new constitution. Because it would appear as if uh, you are defying the constitution, you know, in terms of, uh, in terms of usurping the powers of the local authorities as it were. I'm interested in the, in, in the case of Gweru and tomorrow on my desk I'll be, I'll be at it because uh, it's something that, that we are grappled with uh, in, the, in, in our realm. But really, what is government doing in terms of aligning you know, the uh, local government legislation to the new constitution? Thank you. Thank you. Let me begin from where you end up. A city council or a local authority is not a state within a state. It's not independent from the nation. It's not a sovereign on its own. When you are in the city of Harare, and this is the cry by colleagues to say, let's devolve authority. We are not talking about setting up separate states within Zimbabwe. That's what, that's what, that's what the constitution yes. says. Precisely. The fact that uh, Zimbabwe remains one. Precisely. I'm saying to what extent is government, you know, aligning local government legislation? To what extent is a government aligning local government legislation I was going to, to, come to, that. To, to, to the constitution? Because part of the problems Ruveneko, that he has raised are more structural. And if we address the structural matter in terms of aligning our local government legislation to the constitution, perhaps some of these things we are talking about now would be going away. Okay. Let me say, in terms of aligning the Constitution, our local government laws to the Constitution, my predecessor, Dr. Chombo, he started working on this uh, alignment process. The ministry was one ministry. It combined both urban authorities and local authorities. This was separated. And we have, this is my colleague, Minister Nube, who looks after the rural affairs. And I look after the urban authorities. We have been holding meetings to say, now we need to realign ourselves, because remember, once you have been given an act to look after, you can't then go to another minister and say, I want your act to make it my act. I'm going to align it because the work that Dr. Chombo had done basically was to say, let's kind of like equalize rural authorities and urban authorities. But now you have another minister looking after this sector, another minister looking after this sector. However, we've made a bit of progress, quite a lot of progress, in sitting down both ministries. We undertook a trip to Switzerland to look at how some of the devolved uh, states are run in Switzerland and so forth. So that work is underway. All right. No.
Um, I'd like to uh, come back to more questions, but first, just thankfully that we are about to wrap up our program and that we can all breathe, thanks to Pro Air, because it's genuinely getting warm in here. Some of the questions are hot. Some are blowing ah. cold air, but generally blowing hot air. So um, thank you for Pro Air for that. I mean, always on the ball, always on demand, always quick and available to come and make their resources, um, their services rather, rendered to us. Um, Rooney's for where we're sitting. Thank you very, very much for that. Mel's Touch for making me look like this, as well as um, Swiss Global and, of course, Zimbo Live, broadcasting also on their platform. So we have... Um, some questions coming on Zimbo Live, but I'd like to take two more questions from our audience um, before we wrap up our program. And I must emphasize, and I will enforce it, that please may your question be a question and not a statement, because then it makes it long, and then our minister, being a government minister, will also make his answer long, and will never wrap up. <laughs> so if you could please just target your question, this, uh, you know, condense it to something short and concise, sorry to rush you, but for the purpose and interest of time, let's get right to the point. So we'll take a... How many hands do we have up left? I wouldn't take a repeat of hands. We've got four hands, so we'll, we'll accommodate those, two, four, five. Those are the only hands we'll take, and please make it quick. Honorable, if you'll also please follow suit. Thank you. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister. My name is Makhlio Mapfumo from Zimbabwe United Nations Association. I just wanted to ask, as a ministry, what or how many of the 17 sustainable goals of the United Nations have you adopted, and are they at par? With, with the local councils. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Quite a number, of course. Uh, they, you look at issues of poverty, sanitation. These are some of the areas that are basically falling within our cluster, falling within my ministry. Issues to do with the environment. In as much as there is a ministry of environment that looks after that, I also have a duty to ensure that we uphold some of these standards that are enshrined or captured in the SDGs. Poverty. You've addressed poverty eradication. Yes, poverty. I did. This is my first question. That's what I answered. I answered you earlier one in terms of housing. And I think I spoke quite a lot about youth, how the youth can play a part in growing the economy and fighting poverty. Are you with him? You're not listening. <laughs> this is the problem with you. Maybe the point that you made with, was either a repetition of a point once made that has not yet come to fruition, or there's a further question. I have a follow-up question on poverty okay. eradication, yeah. uh, Honorable Minister, um, unless someone else can articulate it better. But my question then is, when we look at the rates of unemployment in this country, you talk about the opportunities presented by government, by the party, can't take that away. However, our po unemployment rates are not going down, and the standard of living is atrocious all right we have even right now there's doctors striking because they cannot afford to work under those conditions and not get what they need as a young person build a life start a family and that's just a loose example but there are many instances in which poverty is is killing Zimbabweans and for us to sit here and, and take that answer lightly and say of SDG goals <laughs> poverty has been addressed no 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 no, no. he said which goals in terms of SDGs are you looking at? Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. And, and that's what I answered. I said some of the areas that we're looking at from my sector. Mm -hmm. Poverty, is sanitation. Poverty, eradication. Okay. It's a local government goal. Mm -hmm. We had a seminar in Vumba with the UNDP and we looked at all these issues. I'm sure she needs to be familiarized with regards to the SDGs also, if I might say. Why, why would you say that? I'm sorry, can I take it? <laughs> Let's come to our other questions as we wrap up. Uh, I'd like to thank you, Renego, for awarding me this opportunity. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you, Honorable you. Minister, for your presence. I'm so excited to be part of this discussion. Uh, firstly, I'd like to acknowledge <coughs> your acknowledgement of uh, the very fact uh, of the challenges we have on the ground and um, some of the, the solutions uh, that have been put in place uh, uh, currently running. One challenge I would like to pinpoint uh, is something you have uh, already lamented on, uh, the issue of water. Not only water, but uh, clean and safe water. In reference uh, to a recently published uh, report by EMA, uh, no water is safe uh, in most uh, if not all parts of Harare. 
in as much as I understand uh, the technicalities uh, involved uh, in um, provision of, um, of water for the masses, uh, I know it cannot be solved uh, in an instance. But my question is, uh, yes, the issue of water uh, been given uh, due diligence it deserves. I'll give an example uh, of where I came from, of where I come from, uh, in Rua. For the past two years, uh, I have stayed in Rua. Uh, the water that comes uh, out of the tape um, is beyond what I can put to, um, uh, to description. So, I don't know. I think your question is, what are you doing to improve water? Yes. Uh, not, not has the issue of water been addressed, because clearly it hasn't, even with your example. Yeah, sure. So, Honorable, what are you doing to address I'm that? Happy that clean uh, water. Has raised the issue of uh, yes. clean water, which yes. is part of the SDGs yes. as well. Yes. We need to ensure that we provide a healthy environment and sure. drinking or self drinking water and so forth. Mm -hmm. But Rua is one of those townships that has developed without people attending to some of the core requirements, which is your water. Rua is affected. The little amount of water we get, there's a small dam. And just now the council, the Rua council, has completed the connection bring more water to Rua. Arare water was also being supplied to Rua, but we did not, over the years, as Rua developed, attend to basic infrastructure to convey more water to these areas. And half the time, part of that water that comes there is very dirty, sure. is not clean, sure. and Rua has also gone into this problem of uh, sewers or toilets, septic tanks and boreholes, mm -hmm. which is a major problem. So I agree with you that there are areas in Arare where we have a challenge with regards to the quality of our underground water. But it's not the entirety of our city. They are selected areas. And the EMA has been talking about it, what should be done, including Zinwa, to make sure that that water is usable. But I have taken note of a situation in Arua. I will need to talk to the officials and find out exactly why the quality of water is so poor in Rua. But I need to emphasize, we did not invest enough in that area. People have built more homes and houses, but we have not had a commensurate investment in terms of the infrastructure. All right, uh, we'll move on to a few more, the other two questions, the last three. Please may you make your question concise. Good evening, Thank Honorable you. Minister. I'm very glad to be speaking to you right now. I'm Terence Tachona, co-founder of Unite Science and Technology, a youth who has been following the developments of our government for the past nine years. Honorable Minister, all of the problems that are being aided by citizens, this can be solved by Zimbabweans. I'm not going to complain. But Honorable Minister, our government has been trailing in terms of implementing technological advancements. Honorable Minister, we have seen STEM by Professor Jonathan Moy. That's a very, very good uh, project. But what are we doing about those graduates who have uh, studied computer science? What are we doing about those graduates who studied engineering? They are here in Zimbabwe. They are looking for jobs outside. As the government, I've been following with the CDIC, Minister of ICT, and Tertiary Science and Technology. There are no programs that are open to everybody, even me from the grassroots, from the rural areas, who is capable of developing these uh, cutting edge technologies that can solve the problems that we have. We can't have citizens who are complaining about roads when we can invest in uh, bringing up solutions. Can so I ask watch you this. a question? Sorry, because you've defied the rules and made your statement a statement as opposed to a question. I'm going to ask you something. Yeah. Um, you being in technology and ICT and as a young person, what do you think you can do to contribute to the challenges that, for example, local government faces? where there's uh, poor sewage, where there's poor infrastructure, where there's you know, all these issues that we're discussing today on this platform. I'm going to throw it back at you because you haven't yet asked a question and you've been speaking for about a minute and a half. So you have a lot to say. So I'd like to know what you would do. All right, Ruven Echo. Uh, as a United States and Technology, we're a group of tech enthusiasts. Mm -hmm. We can solve, we can come up with these technologies, but we don't have the platform. You have one right now. You've got a microphone and a live audience. No, I the, mean, this is over 100,000 people that are going to listen to this. Is a uh, government-funded platform, facilities to develop these technologies that can help the country. We are okay. not looking for business. We are not looking for money. We are not looking to make profits. 
we want these technical hubs. We want these incubators. Right. We want the data centers that we can be able to test our systems in real life that can right. help the government. So what, the, what does the government, what has the government done there you go. See, to support a science and technology? There you go. Honorable. I'm happy. Mm. But I'm, let me put it up front. I'm not a science and technology <laughs> fundy. But I think his, the question would apply to but, any industry. But what you say yeah. is very important. Mm. Let me say also that our education system, and that's why there is the psychomotor element, we've got to balance. It appears there was a preponderance for first-class students who are very good in law, uh, English, and so forth. It was just the development of the intellectual level without us attending to the psychomotor, sure, sure. the skills. We need to be able, and the president has been consistently talking about the need to diversify. And two ministers are doing exactly that. Dr. Dokora, using the Ziramasanga Commission and the report, he is attempting to put right some of the wrongs that have been inherent in our education system. Professor Moyo has come from the higher education state level and say, let's promote science, mathematics, technologically friendly subjects so that we can create a development of base for our nation. Young people can change a nation. What you are saying to us is you have this burning desire to do something, but you seek recognition. You seek a platform upon which you can say to the nation, you know what, this is what I'm thinking. This is what I can do. And I'm so happy that you have come up. We will talk to you after this and introduce the relevant minister. He said, talk to this young man. He has an idea. Perhaps it's an idea that can bring value to our nation. Who knows? Thank you for that answer. I long for the day where that answer is concise. To say visit www. or go to address or go to this phone number because that is a very important question because many young people are filled with ideas and passion and energy but they do not know where to channel it and that's dangerous that's how we create the brain drain and we don't want any more of that so i think it's a very good point you've raised and i hope we can take this up and continue to discuss this even off the air and make sure we develop these ideas um we have a lot of questions coming zimbo live has asked you questions about rural councils performing better since you operated by zanu pf but you've already addressed that i don't want to take us backwards langton marioga says um you know uh, why are you always interfering with mdc issues but i want to now wrap up our audience questions because i'm uh, again, time, you know, uh, we started late and I think we owe you um, the amount of time that we did take away from you to make sure that you exhaust all your questions. But um, we do going to have to wrap it up after these two questions. So please go ahead. Uh, uh, Minister, my name is Tafazo Chingoma, a medicine graduate uh, from NAST. Uh, mainly, my questions are follow-up questions. I'm sorry to say, I think you are running away from the question. Uh, my questions, they are mainly follow-up questions. Yeah. Uh, I think, I'm sorry to say, I think you are running away from the questions. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not, you're not on point. Uh, at first, uh, you spoke about uh, lowland areas, people building on uh, uh, wetland. How they just don't grow overnight? Up until someone appears, then you just come. We know for a fact houses are being demolished and you, you, you dismiss that fact. Then my second question, if we Let's go back to 1990s. I don't think there were land barons. Why now? I think there's something wrong with the structure that's there. Because you can only take advantage of the situation. I think these land barons, of course, they are wrong. But they're taking advantage of the situation, which you should address. I think let's, let's, talk, let's talk about uh, probably who is being jailed. What? Let's address the situation. Why are they lean, uh, the, the land parents? They're taking advantage of the situation, which are you, I think you are failing to, to, to address. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll start with the last again. Very interesting. We have taken action. A number of the land barons have been jailed. We still have a number of them but also. But you were also jailed. <laughs> the may, okay, so I heard Mata. I believe that the question is who has been jailed? When and you know, maybe not to say give barons, names, but let, I think let, there's this little evidence this that this has been brought to book. I, I think it would be very difficult mm. to see a big man like my dear brother here huh? being a land baron directly. He always gets some little boys mm. who, die, who do the bidding and running for them. 
You also, I think he did explain, some people were using the cover of war veterans, abusing a, the war veterans, and they called it bombing land. They just go there and say, they put the Zambia flag and confirm, you have not seen it in the past two years. We stopped it. Guys who just wake up in the morning and call this place to say Tongo Garhausen Cooperative. Mm -hmm. The late Dr. Parrenyatwa, they put there. Dr. Joshua Nkomo. And they were carrying out these nefarious activities using names that are common to our society, heroic names, so that the authorities would be scared. There was a time when people thought, well, how do I interfere with the Mama Mafia and Housing Cooperative? It's like I'm attacking Mama Mafia. Some came up with crazy things. They say, Chatunga village. I said, ah, ah, leave the young man alone. He has nothing to do with what you're doing. So we have started controlling this situation. And people are very creative. You said, I'm running away. I'm not going to run away from any question. Right. They were doing this. But we have done the best that we could under these circumstances. We have jailed them. You're asking me which ones. I might have to come back, Rove, with names but of those ones which have been jailed. But there are those ones you are looking for who must just be jailed because it will make you happy. Yeah. I think he's just been jailed as a land baron. But we can't just arrest a person because there is a perception that is a land baron. Honorable Minister, I can't at this juncture allow you to continue without asking this. I know there's two questions yes, there. Still, we'll let you go back to that. But while we're on land barons, please do address. I made a, maybe address it in jest earlier. But this issue of you selling land meant for youth to profit Magaya. Please Sorry. address Can that. I address because we're looking question. at you and, and talking about I'm, land I'm, barons. I'm so and happy. We are thinking you are one of them. I'm so happy that you have given me the opportunity. Yes to deal with this matter. Please. Please. I mean, do you want to hear this? Yeah, yeah because Good. I, look, yeah. Men of God, Magaya. Magaya has been building. I think he's big time into construction. You go to waterfalls. He has built an amazing complex. Quality of water. Hate him or like him. You've got to give it to him that he has done a good job. That place, I went there. He was working 24-7. I must confess, I was actually very impressed with his work ethic. They were running around with wheelbarrows. They were able to put up that structure, I think, in under three, four months. Massive housing complex that they've come up with. My guy says to me, look, minister, we need to do more housing in the country. My guy has acquired lots of pieces of land around the country. I said to him, look, you talk to Yudko our urban development corporation. Magaya came up with his money to Yudkop and paid Yudkop, not to save Yekasukwere. Yudkop talked to him. And but you said, referred him to Yudkop? Look, because that is my duty. Okay. If you want a house, you mm -hmm. want to build, I cannot deny you if you're a Zimbabwean, you will go and talk to the authorities. Okay. We want people, the private sector, to help us deliver housing. Why should I say I don't want him? Is he not a Zimbabwean? If you come, and, okay, I won't talk about you, because you also have been subject to attacks, because they say, why is she using a studio owned by the government? Mm. As if you have no rights of your own as a Zimbabwean. You are born and bred in this country. So is Magaya. Now, politically, individuals want to affect a program. Some people thought, well, this program is too good to allow it to go away and just succeed. Why not say Kasukwere sold land? How can I sell land that doesn't belong to me? How can I give to Magaya land that doesn't belong to me? Let's remove the name Magaya, Honorable Minister. No, no, let's talk the about Magaya, because this is what we say. The assumption is that you sold no, no, land that I, was made for I the was, youth I'm to so somebody else. I'm so happy that you gave it me could this have opportunity been Mr. Thomas. to address this It could have been Mr. Matter. Green. We know this is your time, now, Minister, but you gave me this it could be anybody. Ruveneko, you're interfering yes. with my rights. <laughs> Let me speak as a Zimbabwe. I've been lampooned. I've been called corrupt. Yes, you I have. I have, you have and very it's a clear yeah. ideas of how we should improve the generality of our young people, and Zimbabweans in particular. Mm -hmm. I addressed the housing question. 
They were land barons, people who were stealing land. Mm -hmm. And they are still here. Nobody has talked about them. I've given the example of Chikanga, mm -hmm. Caledonia. He pocketed around 56 million US dollars. Mm -hmm. Yes. You can speak about that because he's in court now. Right. But we, were, we were others. talking about okay? your incidents. Now, my inc incidents, call it incident. Yes. I say, let's open up their private partnership. I took a paper to cabinet. There are individuals who might want to buy land. Yes, land will be sold to them at this price of, this is the amount of money. If they're going to develop housing estates. Whether Magaya was the wrong person or the right person, is to judge us in the future. But, give it to him. He has been building. What he was going to do with that, I don't know. But Judkop has a responsibility. So in short, you did not sell land because to Because the land Magaya. was not mine. Fine. I did not sell Fine. land. I can't sell land that doesn't belong to me. In the interest and of can time, I say, Minister. Ru, yes. please, I was here at uh, 5.30. 530. <laughs> now is my time. Let's be here until 9. Oh, dear. But now I'm bundles. I know it's not a Let's address this matter. Can I lend? Here we go to develop a nika. But now in Zimbabwe, we have good ideas. We must support them. Let's put away these petty jealousies. There's some crazy character who did some computations. This piece of land will bring about six, seven, eight billion dollars. Some funny numbers. Kasukwe is going to become very rich. This will be used for political purposes. This is the bottom line to why that story became so prominent. They thought some people were trying to build up a cash, dollar cash, for political purposes. Mm -hmm. That was why it was attacked. People who didn't want us to also to support the youth and get young people to have some opportunity said attacking that program because, hey, well, but why is it being done? Yes, Yet, you admit that the so that everything you do is about elections. But you want dear, to win an election. I'm a political person. Yes. I'm a political animal. Yes, you are. Every day I look at you, I want your votes. Right. So if I don't so do that which pleases you, you I have no them business for thinking to be that, that there was a gimmick. Well, the thinking, if it becomes evil, it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. A political person, political party, it's business in politics. It's to deliver. Mm -hmm. Make promises and deliver. Mm -hmm. But if somebody hates a good idea just because it's come from Ruvenico, Tough luck. We'll let it end there. We'll let that one rest there. Okay, we've got two more questions. I have so much to say in response. My brother, to that. you had then another one. Sorry, just tell yes. Me. His other question was about uh, wetlands, but it was yes. Yeah. Why do? But where were okay. you when people okay. build a house? Right. So Thank you very much. So foundation. window level. Let me give you example. Let, let me tell you what how it happened uh -huh. and what happened. And I'm sure my dear brother here will bail me out. Yeah. I want to tell you what happened. In terms of the law, if you occupy a piece of land today, what, and what these guys do, mm -hmm. you drive past Mascati mm -hmm. by the following morrow, one room or two room, like what happened at the airport road. Why muka maxim and a quepot pasna chiripu? What zo kama deko? Ya pera kwakwachi? Usiku they go to a stage. Now the law says once somebody has put up a dwelling or a building, you can't bring it down. You've got to go to court. I'm just telling you. This the is law. an example of some of these structures. Right. What you're describing, but Minister, is not real for this, many of these other structures. Some of people were living in houses for months. Mboyo yo demolishwa. We can't talk about these overnight structures like that's a real thing. But and but I'm sure. Right. What we so must right. right. The fault, I would say, we have a development control mechanism, which must never allow for any construction without city council approval. approval. Correct. And this is what we've been battling with. How was it happening? Right. No, no, no. Hutcop was not the problem. Hutcop has come to regularize that which was allowed to happen illegally. Because the city fathers, and I might not blame even the city fathers, the operators went to sleep. They actually, and let's say, say this is a fact, some of them were involved corruptly yes. in these housing schemes. Mm -hmm. These housing schemes got prominent when people started making money out of them. 
So they'll encourage you, go ahead and build it. And they'll pay a blind eye. Until such a time that this problem became kind of like insurmountable. People have already built houses, homes. It happened their portrait. We had to say, no, no, this is wrong. Mm -hmm. It has to be brought down. You can't have a squatter camp, assuming we want to have them. But it can't be there. Your national gateway. People are coming in. Because somebody just wants to embarrass you. We have said, if you want to build a house, you must have all necessary approvals. City authorities, building plans, and so forth. You address this of structural challenges. This is part of it. But to add on to the problem, our councils were built for perhaps 500,000 people. City of Harare's capacity, including the water capacity, was meant for a smaller town. Administratively, Harare has grown three, four, five times. Naturally. Hence, we have said now the city of Harare, devolve some of your organizational responsibilities. Mbare. And share them. Mount Pleasant. Mm -hmm. We have said you must have capacity to service the roads, collect revenue, development control, and so forth. Right. At Borodell. Right. I've made the approvals there because we have realized the Harare of 1980 and the Harare of 2017. They're completely different. Honorable, in the interest of time, I'm going to have to cut you off there. I hope that that was answered to an extent. You know, I mean, what we know for a fact is we cannot still be driving on the roads built by Ian Smith in 2017. We cannot continue to survive on this infrastructure because populations grow, cities develop, and floods arrive. Okay? So I think you've heard our point. Um, we're going to come to our last <laughs> question from the audience. Okay. Be sweet point. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Uh, Minister, we have about more than 90% of our people in the, uh, in the informal sector. And, um, sorry, we have 90% of our people in the informal sector. And Zanupi have promised us 2.2 million jobs. Um, considering mm. that um, our graduates are in the streets selling airtime, um, uh, being vendors, is, uh, is that what you, uh, what you mean by the 2.2 million jobs? Is that what you promised? I thought I answered this question. He did address one. the jobs part, but, but let him not okay. all of yeah. us. Yeah. Not speak to that point no, in particular. Sorry. Not yeah. all of us can be uh, entrepreneurs. Cotton, yes, exactly. can be entrepreneurs and have the resources or support. Yes, not right. all of us can be cotton growers and tobacco farmers. So, um, is that what you promised for us to be vendors, for us to be farmers, farmers, for us to sell airtime in the streets? No, I I really agree with you, my sister, that you went to school. You acquired a degree, you might not have an opportunity to work in a setting that meets your standards. And this is what I articulated earlier on. The challenge with our education system. Some have degrees in divinity, they still want a job. Some have degrees in English, they want a job. Some have acquired governance, peace and governance. You know what this country requires? Is to educate the people, young people, how to do how to create wealth for themselves. We have educated a lot of our youngsters, and they are actually on the market. On they want jobs. Of, yes. But yes. it's very few who have been able to use their education creatively, like what Ruveneko has done. There's a question here that's come. What good is the informal sector when I can't import raw materials because of bond notes? Speaking of entrepreneurship, yeah, exactly. there is no ease of doing business in this country. We've been My dear sister has just addressed a very important question. Yeah. says, why am I producing cotton? When you produce cotton, we export cotton. It is the guys, finally Zimbabweans, we have to work and export. What good we have is to the create informal goods. sector, Honorable Minister? Please look at this question here. What good is the informal sector when I can't import raw materials no, my, my because of bond? But I'm gone. reading for you. <laughs> what good is the informal sector when I can't import raw materials because of bond notes? But I thought this is what I was addressing. No, you're talking about cotton growing. Yeah, but Ruvenego, we need to export yes. for us to import. Yes. Bond notes are transactional. Mm -hmm. They are within our nation. Mm -hmm. Whatever we have in our nostril accounts must be used carefully to bring in key raw materials that can see our industry grow. And I think we must take responsibility as a government. Do you agree that there's no ease of doing business in the country right now? 
There is no incentive for foreign investors. We know that we're talking about infrastructure today. There's no way government can do this alone. What is government doing to lure private sector to assist in the rehabilitation of our roads? To lure foreign companies? There's companies like Group 5 in South Africa that are constantly developing. You just have to drive down, you know, uh, Fifth Street and Sa Santon and see that they're developing. What are we doing about that transactional aspect of a country? You know, perhaps I might be out of 10, mm -hmm. out of line. Mm -hmm. But talk about um, the Bike Bridge Road. Mm -hmm. We're just going to commission now. <sighs> yeah, but again... Sorry? <laughs> you read it in the yeah, Herald today. But you say us attracting investment. We're doing that. Power, energy. Maybe we are not doing enough to publicize. We are signing deals with China. It's all looking great on paper. Tenders go to certain individuals that are named Sir. But at the end of the day, what are we doing? What are we Ruben doing? Ruvenego given a chance. She can huh? cause a revolt. No, no, no. She, she has a way of, um, well, no, no creatively using some of the failures to say it's individuals. I hear you, Ru. You might want to put the blame on individuals. But I think collectively, as a nation, we have a duty to uplift our country. And in your own way, and I allow me to salute you, you have given me an opportunity to speak to millions of Zimbabweans, maybe thousands of Zimbabweans. Locally and in the diaspora. this is what we yeah. think must be done. You are doing well. This is journalism. This is communication. We are giving our story to the world. If we can have 10, 15 other citizens in their fields of endeavor, do what you're doing. But, Minister, you're speaking to me. Right now, you've got millions listening, hundreds of thousands. Yeah, but I'm saying... You need to sell the dream. You but... are the ZANU-PF National Political Commissar, right? You are the Minister of Local Government. Sell the but dream you know why and I came convince here. all those people you know watching, especially on Zimbo Live, sitting there with their pounds, their Aussie dollars, their dollars, US dollars, their Canadian dollars, wanting to say, how do I invest in Zimbabwe? You know, Ruben Ruben how can I start Chandu, a business to Chandu be a Chandu the yeah. Yeah. You know what? Mm. It was to support your dream. Right. I knew I'll bring quite an audience, mm -hmm. whether it's controversial or not, but... I thought, when you sent me the email, yes. I said, look, she's starting. Mm -hmm. But this is what we want. I must go there. I would have said, I'm, not, no, no, no. I'm too busy. And but we I acknowledge came, that, right? We, should, we, should we just, yes. Thank you. I came okay. here because I say, here's a young Zimbabwean who has a dream. Mm -hmm. She could become another, our Zimbabwean answer to Oprah. Mm -hmm. And we must go there as political leaders with our good baggage and support you. Mm -hmm. And if another youngster here were to call me to say, Minister, come, I'm starting a construction company. Come and see. I will go so that we can give value to what our own people are doing. Mm -hmm. I don't go to interviews often. This day. No, you don't. So, <laughs> you know, by coming here, I say to myself, here is a good opportunity to showcase the talent we have in our nation. And I hope you can inspire others who might say, Minister, come and let's have a chat. Not only me. So to every other story, young person that you can't go on their show or support their story, what are we saying to them who are listening? I'm so happy that Zimbabweans are listening, first and foremost. Yes. Some are here. Because they care. I'm so happy they that care. I salute these guys right. who have come to see us. <laughs> Yeah. He's into IT, yes. technology. Yes. Because of this communication direction, I say, why don't I put you in touch with the relevant minister? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, let's, let's take that now. We're going to definitely have to wrap up. I'm getting into so much trouble from my team. I keep getting red flags about how we've gone way over our stipulated time. But at the end of the day, this is Ravenico Live. As he said, we are starting and we're growing. We're finding out what you need and what you want. But I certainly can't continue past this point regarding time. Otherwise, it just becomes a bit of a mess. So we're going to have to wrap up. And I do hope that you have all exhausted your points and your questions and your views for our Honorable Minister. Um, so just to wrap up, I'm going to close now um, with one question that it seems a pertinent thing that's been one thing to wrap up and note that it's a wrap up I was drinking my thing, Amira, don't you know? and you know I told him before the show to not show his water because anyway 
Tinga, yes, they must have your the water. Ties. They should. They should. Um, so we have questions around factionalism. I did not want to get into this because my question more is, how are you going to unite the party? You've got Tafam Tena who said, do you have ambition to be president? Mm. Who's the person? Tafam Tena from the Zimbo Live platform. Can you please, uh, yeah, from the Zimbo Live platform. You see, this question has been asked on money for us. Mm -hmm. There is one president mm -hmm. at the time. Yes. The president of our country right now is President Robert Gabriel Mugabe. Right. Many of you in the future, really no one can tell who will be the next president of our country. Minister Kasukwere, do you have ambition to be president <laughs> one day? No one said during the current president. Tambutola no, no, no. is the current tenure. As a young, as a young, as a young leader, <laughs> as a young leader, okay, you might, you might, you might even be getting votes right now. Yes. Either, believe it or not, yeah. it's yeah, a question for the next 15, 20 years. You Do see, you have ambition to be president? Look, you know what? Even if one has an ambition, you must know what you want. And Do what you I want don't want to be is what you're asking. <laughs> you don't want to be asked or you don't want to be no, president? the question you're asking me is yes, Buda. I'm president. I think we've been answered. I really do think and we've been answered. That. I oh think we have been answered. And this could I'm on the record. Has yes. a come out in his papers? Saying? To say I have no ambitions. To be president ever? I said... Otherwise, I, why are you here? You never want to be president? Ever. But I said I have no ambition. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> ah. That and the ambition. But you know what I'm going to do? We're all ready. So can you run again and do support? I'm still young. We're not going to go to the age of the age of the age of the age. So, Minister, you do not want to be president. One no, I day. said I, I have no ambition to be president. I mean, I'm being honest. You don't. I know you want to put me in a corner. It's I said, not a corner. I, this room is so big. No. Got pro air blowing in here. We're I've, good. I have no ambitions. Yeah. Because the moment you have these ambitions, yeah. you lose track of what you must be doing. I'm a servant. And it, You're a civil servant. To yeah. The nation. Well, I've Correct. been appointed by His Excellency yes. to do yes. a job. Yes. It is mad and wrong. For me to try and use these assignments that I've been given to try and start saying, I want to be president. Perhaps I failed in my assignments. Why should I, why should I even come and answer such a question? I, I, listen, no, no, it's a very important question. Very important to you. And I hope in the future, when you ask other politicians, they must be honest as I've been. Okay. We hope you've been honest, because if we see your face on the campaign poster 10 years from now, we'll rewind to this and say, you said you had no ambition, Chi, Chachinja. But anyway, we'll you leave that for now. You asked me a question then, oh, yes, and I'll answer fine. you, Pop. Oh, it's not going to Chinja. Honorable Minister, okay. Um, <laughs> Okay, so what, what, what are you doing as the, as the political commissar to unite the party? It's no joke that there's infighting, that there's many opposition parties, there's a mess in Zim politics, there's voter apathy because no one knows who they're going to vote for in 2018. So what are you doing to unite you, your party? Ruvena goes hmm. questions. Hmm. There are 10 in one. Yes. There is question of factionalism, mm -hmm. which I'm assuming you're saying within ZANU-PF, yes. they're competing political yes. interests. Yes, yes. It is a fact that in any political organization, there will always be individuals with ambitions. Mm -hmm. But what guides us is the resolutions of our party, right. the various congresses and central committee meetings. Mm -hmm. In our case, there could be others. Like, I think, let me answer this one. Every politician aspires to have the next position. But in our party, we are agreed. We have a leader who was voted for by the party voted for by the country, what we should do, all of us, is to support him and ensure that he succeeds. In the country, there are issues. They are issues of delivery that we as a government assist with. Mm -hmm. and we must do our part. Right. Job creation. Make it easy for young people to do the best that they can. Housing. The economy. All that requires us. Farming. Mm -hmm. There are issues to do 
with other political parties, which are mushrooms in their they numbers. Are, yeah. It appears every politician now wants to be a leader. Tidmas Mtasa, Lugare Gumbo, Joyce Mjuru, Temba Mliskwa, they, it has become a, a, a trend. A trend. Right. You get kicked out, you immediately become president. Can I beat one man band? is president of PDP. Washman mm -hmm. uh, president. If you got kicked out, wouldn't you do the same? I have a business to go back to and look after. Right. Com oil, etc. Exactly. Right. It's suffering. Right. I'd rather be there. Right. Than setting up a party or a name. Right. Tag. Right. So shouldn't this be an opportunity for ZANU-PF to leverage over the fact that there are so many opposition parties mushrooming, as you said? But we've been, it's, we've it's, been I mean, you're in a position, time. but you're busy in fighting. We so in a way, oh, you're not fighting. Oh, you see, don't read the headlines and take it as this, a fact. We have the privilege of having you right here. That's what, and, and I must answer you, frankly. Yes. I sit in cabinet. I've been working in this government, this party, full time. Since 88, I became chairman of the Youth National Central. 88. There was talk of succession then. That way back. There was infighting. There were factions. They were, exactly, look at it. You were born in them. They are, where you have more than two people, there is a contestation of ideas. Mm -hmm. People always try and outdo, outmaneuver the other. And I think, the notion that uh, we are not taking advantage of the situation. If anything, the victory we delivered in Bikita, a united ZANU-PF, went in there, fought, and won hand assembly, gave birth to ZIM-PF number two. Norton. Norton, Norton is intricate. There were intricate <laughs> issues there. Temba is inside, outside. And now, we've seen many pictures of you still hanging out and communicating and all of that. Actually, politics must not make us enemies. No. Right. I can't because you're MDC and I'm Zanupia. I'm Mugada, not saying. I mean, say even in Parliament. You no, know, but so. I, I can't yeah. say because you have a different mindset, or you system. are now my enemy. Sure. You must be exterminated from the, world, where, mm. from the earth. Mm -hmm. No. We should be matured enough. Mm -hmm. Let my ideas... If I have better ideas, let the people support those better ideas. Mm -hmm. And that's why we stand. All right. But I say to Temba, Norton, thank you very much. You have voted for Temba, but we'll be back. And we are working back. Back by us. taking Temba back or no, taking Norton back? We are working with making sure we remedy that which cost us the not <laughs> all right i absolutely have to wrap up now um i'd like to thank you all our live audience first and foremost um although he's the honorable minister i believe today you were our guest of honor so thank, thank you, you for joining us it absolutely was a pleasure first time we've tried it on the rabbinical show um so one day maybe when we become big and awesome you can say you were the first to be here so thank you very much for that thank you um, <laughs> Thank you to you as our audience, always committed, dedicated, as I said, as Zimbabweans that care about Zimbabwe. That's what this show is about, okay? We talk about everything and anything that is a current affair, and uh, we'll come, cut across all, all uh, topics, all subjects, all interests, and we are guided by you because we want to give you what you want. Thank you to you, Honorable Minister, for coming on time um, and for being as honest, uh, I think, as he could be on certain issues, and uh, of all course... All Yes, on many issues. And a thank you 100% to our sponsors, Rooney's, Mel's Touch, Pro Air, um, who else? Tel One, Swiss Global, and Zimbo Live. Thank you very much. That's it from me for tonight. I'm Ravenico. Good night. Be good. And if you can't be good, be safe.